our colleague, Pete Prisco. He's a hard worker. We know that. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I'll give him that. Yeah, he's a hard worker. And we're putting him to work because we asked him to give out grades for every team up until this point in free agency. And Pete must be feeling nice because I didn't see any Ds or Fs on his report card. I can say this because he's not here. He's getting soft in his old age. <laughs> he was much oh, meaner Pete. about 10 years ago. <laughs> uh, yes, NFL free agency. It has been a wild ride this week. Jacqueline, you, before the show, were trying to convince me to watch Love is Blind. No, I will not do that. But you said it is yes, a... Yes, if you follow a, Amanda on social media, <laughs> flood her DM and tell her to watch Love is Blind. Stop it, you're crazy. You said it was a cultural shift. It is. It we is are a also shift. seeing a cultural shift in the NFL. How do you like that? Uh, take you can look at Pete's grades for free agency. Given the Falcons there with their new quarterback, and A, the Bucks landing on to Baker Mayfield as well. Also, they were able a couple weeks ago to make sure to solidify Mike Evans. They get an A as well. The Texans getting an A. Big hopes for them as well. Uh, some C minuses there, but for Pete, like, that's nice. That's pretty good. Let's welcome in two of the very best. We have two-time Super Bowl champ, Brian McFadden. We also have our very own Will Brinson, but as I'm going to intro him, he is the mountain climber who tried to get to 500, <laughs> didn't make it. The slime victim who ended up in physical therapy and the guy who was once put to sleep by a professional wrestler <laughs> on air, Will Brinson and two-time Super Bowl champ, Brian McFadden. Guys, how are we doing today <laughs> after free agency? Will, how you doing? Uh, I'm doing great. Uh... Um, you know, got another round of PT coming up. Um, I'm sure my worker, they, they did ask, is it workers comp related? Did you suffer this in injury at, at, at your office? And I, I, I said, I mean, what am I going to tell them? I got to tell them yes, right? I, I would think so. I was there. I saw it in person. Let's get to free agency, though. BMAC, I want to start with you. Let's go through some of your favorite signings. Who did you like the most this week? Amanda, Will, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the Steelers signing Patrick Queen. I mean, that was a huge need for the Pittsburgh Steelers. The interior off-ball linebacker is in a very, very important piece to what they do defensively. So, of course, that's my number one signing when you factor in the Pittsburgh Steelers. But outside of that, guys, Amanda Will, I really love, really, really love, and I saw Pete Prisco there on his grades, gave, gave the Atlanta Falcons an A. I love Kirk Cousins going to Atlanta, and here's why. That was a team a year ago. They had no significant quality quarterback play. But they were in the playoff conversation, the, the, the divisional title conversation in December because of everything else they had going on, of, of course, with the up and down play in the division. But now that they have a quarterback with a, a, a productive pulse in Kirk Cousins, one would think this team will thrive in a different direction than what we saw last year. Quarterback play from them a year ago in 2023, when you talk about Desmond Ritter and Taylor Heineke, they combined for 17 touchdowns, 16 interceptions. Kirk Cousins in eight ball games had 18 touchdowns, five interceptions, over 2,300 yards, completing almost 70% of his passes. And in those eight successful games as an individual, he did a lot of those big time numbers without the best wide receiver in the game and Justin Jefferson. So if you bring Kirk Cousins down to the dirty South, to the hot Atlanta, you pair him up with Bijan Robertson, Right, you talk about uh, Drake London, a guy that's trying to find himself as a wide receiver one in the National Football League, and hopefully, hopefully the potential can show up for a guy in Kyle Pitts with Kirk Cousins. This office can take off. And as I mentioned, when you talk about the uncertainties in the NFC South, yes, you talk about the New Orleans Saints, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers retaining the likes of Baker Mayfield and Mike Evans and Antoine Winfield is a huge, huge plus. But the window is still open. So with the Atlanta Falcons landing Kirk Cousins, that's my top move so far this free agency period. Yeah, I mean, look, I wouldn't disagree with Kirk Cousins as a, as a top option at all. I mean, this is an Atlanta team that, you know, the Jets thought they were a quarterback away when they went and got Aaron Rodgers. Atlanta really might be a quarterback away with all the all the, uh, the help they have, all the skill guys, the offensive line, the defense under Raheem Morris, who, by the way, won 10 games, uh, you know, as a 32-year-old head coach of a crazy Buccaneers team and probably got fired too soon by Tampa. 
I think he's going to be great the second time around as a head coach. Um, I, I would say my favorite signing, though, I'm going to go Derek Henry to the Ravens. Sorry, B-Mac, I know uh, you don't love it, but can you imagine being a Steelers defender or even Patrick Queen? And it's like you're begging the Steelers, you're begging the Ravens to, like, please let Lamar Jackson take the ball so I can just chase him down instead of having to tackle Derek Henry coming through the hole. They do need to work on the offensive line. Um, you know, just two guys. They, they, if, if, if they draft and, draft and develop correctly, then you're going to see I think a really good offensive line a lot of young draft picks on there but the uh, but the skill position guys here for Lamar I mean Derrick Henry Zay Flowers and Mark Andrews that is fun let's have a good about Isaiah likely this Ravens offense uh, under Todd Munkin in the second year in that system I think you could absolutely see take off with Derrick Henry you see he lead your know, second most rushing yards uh, l- last year and he had 4.2 yards per carry but the Titans offensive line was bad and uh, this is this is Derrick Henry is the most rushing yards in the NFL since 2018. Lamar Jackson is the most rushing yards by a quarterback since 2018. And now you're combining the two together. I love this. I love this combo. Uh, Well, I actually agree with you, Her. I absolutely love this, and I think he's going to look more natural in a Ravens uniform than he did with the Titans. Speaking of the Titans, we asked both of you your most surprised signing, and both of you have the same answer. It's Calvin Ridley to the Titans. Will, why was that the most surprising for you? Well, I think because we all thought the Calvin Ridley and the Jaguars were pulling some shenanigans on the Falcons, waiting until the start of free agency to guarantee that the, the pick would only be a third rounder instead of a second rounder. And then, yeah, you know, there was like some buzz. I think, I think even our own uh, Jonathan Jones mentioned a, a mystery team, which is my favorite thing in free agency, by the way, ever. Like a mystery team makes everything better. And it turns out the Titans were that mystery team. Uh, the passing game coordinator from Jacksonville moved over to be the OC in Tennessee. Ridley wanted to get paid and now he is getting paid in Nashville with the Titans. It's a young team. They're going to find out if Will Levis is any good. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, absolutely the biggest surprise of free agency by far. Yeah, I agree with you, Will. I mean, talk about the expectations when they decided to trade for Calvin Ridley. One would think it wasn't a rent a year, only a one-year deal for the organization, knowing with the, process, the, the resources they gave up to get Calvin Ridley, Ridley. And then when you factor in, you know, Calvin Ridley production, he had his best second year, his second best year in his career in regards to receiving yards, working with Trevor Lawrence. So Calvin Ridley, I don't know exactly the difference in money when you factor in going to Tennessee, leaving Jacksonville. Both states, by the way, are tax-free states. So you get that luxury in regards to your state taxes or the lack thereof. But you left Trevor Lawrence to go catch passes from Will Levis. Now, we all know about the potential from either guy, right? But one would say Trevor Lawrence is a few steps ahead of Will Levis based on his experience in the National Football League and being more consistent. And those two guys had a nice working relationship, I thought, from what I witnessed a year ago there in Duval County. So for me, as you mentioned, I echo Will. I was a bit surprised to see Calvin Ridley not only just leave Jacksonville, but he left Jacksonville to go to a situation where there's a lot of unknowns or uncertainties when you talk about what this team will look like offensively, especially with their second-year quarterback and a second-year starting quarterback in Will Levis. Both agree, Calvin Ridley, the most surprising move. What, what move are we not talking about, though, BMAC? What under-the-radar move do you like? Listen, Amanda, Will, we just highlighted two teams in the AFC South. Let's highlight the best team in the AFC South, the Houston Texans. Being able to go get an elite-like pass rusher in Daniel Hunter is huge, and here's why. D'Amico Ryans is the head coach for the Houston Texans, but we all got an opportunity to see what he can do in San Francisco with the success he had in San Francisco led to a head coaching opportunity in Houston when you talk about putting pressure on opposing quarterbacks. And he builds his defenses in the trenches. So we saw Will Anderson Jr. had a heck of a rookie campaign. But now you were able to go get Daniil Hunter, who had 16 and a half sacks a year ago. His last four, four full healthy seasons. He's totaled 56 sacks. That's basically 14 sacks per year when he's been healthy in a full year. Then you pair him up with, as I mentioned, with Will Anderson. Don't forget about Nico Archery as well. They got him from the Tennessee Titans. He had 11 and a half sacks. This is a team in the front, defensive front. They're going to cause a lot of havoc for offensive line units and quarterbacks based on the addition of a guy like Daniel Hunter. And don't forget also, guys, Eric Armstead is available. Who coached Eric Armstead in San Francisco on the defensive side? 
D'Amico Ryan. So if they can land a guy like Eric Armstead to that defensive front as well, look out. This is going to be a fun sacking season for the Houston Texans. But with or without Armstead, getting Daniel Hunter is one of the more quiet, under-the-radar signings that no one is really talking about. But you're going to feel the impact when he steps on the football field. I'm coming I'm coming out of like straight out of left field, like different ballpark with my under the radar signing. And I'm gonna go with Colby Parkinson to the Los Angeles Rams as my under the radar signing. And the reason why is if you look at what the Rams are doing, they are beefing up this offensive line and in the tight end position. You're getting a guy who coming out, I think he was on Pete Prisco's better than list. When he came out of the draft and out of Stanford, kind of a sneaky athletic guy, and he can also block. This is a perfect supplement for Tyler Higby, who suffered an injury last year. An athletic, get the ball in his hands, another piece for Sean McVay and my guy, Matthew Stafford, in this run game, in this pass game. I think the Rams have done a, a ton of work on the offensive line, and then you had Kobe Parkinson as sort of an inline uh, pass catcher and, and, a, and a capable blocker. I think this Rams offense, Quiet as it's kept, BMAC could uh, be really explosive this season. Are you excited about the Rams, BMAC? Oh, no question. I think a year ago, outside of winning the Super Bowl, this was Sean McVay's best coaching year. A year ago, when you factor in the unknowns, a lot of players who we didn't know in the month of August, we all knew by October, and just the injuries and, and dealing with so many adverse situations, but yet and still, finding a way to get into the playoffs. I mean, I was surprised to see that from Sean McVay, and it tells you what type of coach he is. And that's why you talk about being one of the more, you know, successful coaches in the National Football League and still young. His coaching tree is the tops out of any coach in the National Football League that's not named Andy Reid. Look. So Sean McVay, I'm high on Sean McVay. I'm high on the Rams. And I do like that under the radar sign when you talk about Parkinson based on what they have going on. So I expect nothing but success coming from Sean McVay and the Rams once again. A lot of people thought he could have been a candidate for Coach of the Year. All right, team with the most work to do when it comes to the draft. Uh, as you guys very well know, I am from Dallas. This is my entire <laughs> Twitter X feed right now. This is all it is. Cowboys, Cowboys, Cowboys. Why are they being so quiet? Uh, BMAC, and this is the Why team you're C, going with. Why does your C looks like a G? What are you talking the about? My C looks, C like, looks a like a G. I'm working with a pin here, Will. This is like, like, this is Cowboys, right? Kind of? Sort of. It's a C. Kind of. Whatever, you got put on to sleep by a professional wrestler on air, man. Uh, BMAC, you're going with the Cowboys. Why? Because the owner, Jerry Jones, said weeks ago, months ago, or whatever the timeline was, this offseason, let's say it together. You guys finish it for me. This offseason, we're going all in. All in. There we go. Jacqueline Will. answered. <laughs> I don't know, but because you hear that from the Cowboys every single year and then nothing happens. So I, I gave up hope years ago. Yeah, the owner came out and told all of us. We didn't ask for that, by the way, Amanda, right? Will, we didn't ask for that. He said, you know what? This offseason, we're going all in. We're still waiting for you to go halfway in, right? <laughs> the only signing the Cowboys have done, and that it just happened, I think, maybe last night or either yesterday was Eric Kendricks. The linebacker. But outside of that, they've been extremely quiet. You would think the Cowboys, their organization, they've been sitting in a library where you're told to not talk and be active. Everyone else is outside in the streets having parties, being festive and making things happen in regards to free agency. And the Cowboys, they've been extremely quiet. And we're surprised because your owner has stated, as you mentioned, Amanda, he says this almost every offseason, but most recently, we're going all in. We're going to do we're going to do whatever we need to do to go all in to, to try to get to the Super Bowl. Every other team in the division has gotten better. Every other team in the division has made multiple signings. Address needs. The Cowboys have yet to do so. So yes, they have the most work to do in the draft because they haven't done anything outside of the Eric Kendricks move in free agency. Yeah, did you see the guy who went viral uh, on, on Twitter because he, or X or whatever the hell we're calling it now, because he was like, if the Cowboys don't make the move in the next hour, I'm going to start smoking meth. And like 59 minutes later, they signed Eric Kendricks. It was pretty funny. Uh, and he was like, yeah, close call for that fella. Um, anywho, I'm going to say that the Minnesota Vikings have the most work to do in free agency, mainly because of the first point that BMAC brought up, which is that they lost Kirk Cousins to the Atlanta Falcons. Now they bring in Sam Darnold, and I like the idea of Sam Darnold and Kevin O'Connell maybe making something work with Justin Jefferson, but you got Justin Jefferson who 
may or may not be requesting a trade. He's not signing the contract. And I think Minnesota, and I think you can add the New Orleans Saints in here as well, just because they, they've, they've lost the pieces. I think that they're falling behind in that division with the Buccaneers doing work and the Falcons doing work as well. Uh, I, I just think you got, a, you know, a lot of catching up to do if you're the Minnesota Vikings and you're sort of, you were already treading water with Kirk Cousins. Now you don't know what you are when you, when you swap out Cousins for Sam Darnold. A lot of work to do for the Vikings. There's actually an article out there asking where in the world are Stephen and Jerry Jones. And people are guessing if they're at South by Southwest, at the Bahamas vacation, or spring break on a yacht. Which one of those three would you choose? Um, I don't know. All sound nice. I would probably say you said the Bahamas. That was an option. Yeah. yeah. We could take the yacht to the Bahamas. Yeah. I uh, don't know if they talk about this. South by since... Southwest seems like yeah, a lot of it's standing. Just, it's dusty. <laughs> uh, and hot right now down in Texas. And you got tornadoes coming. No, uh, Pick 6 Podcast. Will Brinson, part of the Pick 6 Podcast. Latest couple of episodes episodes going over all of the action we saw during free agency make sure to download and follow or if you would like to see will's smiling face you can scan the qr code